Hi, we're uh, fixing our Federal Airtight CCLR stove. It's a 264 CCLR stove. It's made by uh, Vermont Castings. It used to be made by Consolidated Dutch West. This stove uh, is from 86. It served us very well and burned probably over 100 cords of wood over the years. Um, anyway, we've got a, a grate in the middle that's broken in half. And uh, luckily from woodstoveparts.com, we were able to get a replacement grate. So we're just going to show you how that old grate comes out and the new one goes in. We've already vacuumed this out and done a disassembly and reassembly to make the video a little faster. So normally the stove is not this clean. Especially if you're burning wood, you know the same thing. The problem we had is that this center grate, which runs between the two shakers, broke in half. So at the end of last season, we had to rely on our pellet stove. In order to get this out and put the new part in, new part looks a little better, there are some directions that come with the new part uh, where they recommend that you season this in your oven. We did that. We found that to be the best way to do things. Anyway, we'll show you a quick disassembly on how you can get all the way down to how this grid would, grate would come out. You could use the same thing if you had to replace one of these shakers. You need light? No, I'm okay. In the back is a plate that prevents you from burning through the firebox and on this end is also a plate. We're going to take those plates out then take out this floor and that's what lets us access the grate. So you're going to find some in the back on the top. You can see one of the screws in. It's like a Phillips screw number three recess and you'll probably have to move it back and forth a few times to get it to come out. All right, so you're using a big screwdriver like that, put it in here, loosen it up, and take the screw out. Save the screw, it doesn't come with new ones. Remove the back plate out. There'll be a lot of ash and creosote in behind it. And set it aside. Now there's a side plate that also has to come out. It's held in with two 8 millimeter bolts. Just like a little hex head top bolt, but you need a metric socket wrench, 8 millimeter, or a box wrench to take it out. Take them out of the top, do the same thing, lift this plate out. Set that aside. You can see that this plate probably doesn't look the same as yours it's missing an ear. It's also got a big crack down the middle. That's because a lot of ash has accumulated over 30 years. So we're going to replace this part next. But we should still be able to burn for now without it being a problem. Next to come out is the floor plate, which is this big assembly here. You'll be able to see me move it a little bit. And we're going to use a, a fire poker that has a hook in it to help lift it out. I'm going to pick it up a little. And it'll go out the side door. Now if you have a stove that is the CCL, not the CCLLR, is no different other than that your side door is on the other side of the stove. Most of these parts will work with either stove. So if you had to replace it on the CCL, a 264 CCL, you'd be following pretty much the same directions. You'd just be going out a different door. All right, now that we have that out, the old broken pieces come out. Now, in between all the steps that we've been performing, you would have to do a ton of vacuuming. 
I've left a lot of the ash inside the bottom of the stove here. And I've done that because that ash helps protect the plate when you put it back down. This is all accumulated ash that sits under the plate. I'm probably going to vacuum out some of this. You would certainly want to. You'd have to vacuum a lot just to be able to get as far as we have. And, uh, but you want to leave some ash down because it helps protect that floor plate. All right. Now we're going to take the new shaker grate with the big long teeth facing the front and drop it right in where the old one was sitting. You can see it, a little tapered end on it. It just drops right in. And then you're going to put the other parts back in. But you can see that the shaker will work fine now. You can shake out your, uh, your ash into the bottom tray. And we'll be able to put, with a little more moving some of this ash around that we're trying to leave in here, we'll be able to put our, uh, our floor plate back in. That'll be in step two.